Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. First of all, of course, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I uh, wish you guys all the best. So this is gonna be, I think, one of the last videos of this year. So I thought it would be a good idea to just take the time and do a bit of a, a room tour. Just go through every single one of my aquariums, take a closer look, and just show you guys how they're all doing right now. So let's just start with the shelf, because they're all close together, and then we'll move on to the, the two tanks behind me. All right, so let's start with this one. Uh, this one measures 36 centimeters by 26 by 22. So it holds about 20 liters or uh, five, five US gallons. And I set this one up in September, end of September. So it's about three months old now. My idea for this aquarium was to, to show that even in an aquarium of this size, 20 liters, you know, you can still create something that is, that is interesting, that has plenty of details. Uh, so the hardscape consists of black lava rock as well as black spider wood. And it contrasts really nice with the green plants. There's most, mostly green plants in here. Uh, we have a carpet of Hemianthus cuba. Uh, mixed with the Marseillaise and Rizuta. Then on the, on the rocks and in between the wood we have a mix of different types of Bucephalandra as well as some, some Ricardia moss. And the background is mostly uh, pearlweed, there's a little bit of um, Myriophyllum Guiana and a few small crypts here and there. So yeah, it's about three months old now, it's, it's doing quite good but it's recovering from, some, um, from a bit of an algae outbreak. I had some blackbeard algae and staghorn algae. A couple weeks ago, I made a video about the CO2 setup guide, and I was using the CO2 setup this gram for that for that video. So it took me two days to to make that video, and in those two days, this aquarium was not receiving any CO2 because I had to film the equipment and stuff like that. So I dimmed the lights, and I thought it would be okay, but it wasn't. We got a lot of uh, blackbeard algae, a lot of staghorn algae, so. Most of the algae is gone now, but it's still not looking 100% clean. So for about a month now, this aquarium is actually running on DOI CO2. Uh, you guys will probably know my DOI systems by now. Super simple, super stable, homemade CO2. Uh, filtration, I'm using the Denon Escapers Flow, sort of like an external canister filter. The, the filter is sitting below here in this, uh, in this box. The light is the Unique, Unique Nano. This is an RGB light, very similar to the Giro C2. It's quite a powerful light, I think I'm running it about 60% only. So yeah, technique-wise it's, it's quite simple. DIY CO2, small canister filter, and a good quality light. Um, the substrate is the uh, Dendler Scaper soil, and below that we have the Dendler Deponate mix. And I really like that combination, plants are growing really well. I'm still thinking of adding fish to this aquarium. Uh, right now there's only a large group of red cherry shrimps and there are two uh, sparkling grams in here as well but I, I never see them. So if you guys have any fish suggestions drop them in the comments. Um, I was thinking of mosquito rasboras, I think they will, they will look, ni look nice in here. But let's move on to the next cape. Okay next up we have this one. This is almost a cube. It measures 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters by 30. So this one also holds about 20 liters. And this one is actually my longest running scape. It's been running for a year and a half. I'll try to overlay some footage of how it how it evolved over this year and a half. But yeah, I think right now it's it's at its prime for sure. So the technique here is very very similar to the other 20 liter aquarium. Uh, we're again using DIY CO2. 
Uh, we're actually using an internal filter here, just a very small internal filter. And the light is the uh, Chihiro C2. Now the hardscape is mostly covered up with plants. Um, but there is some, some regular lava rock, the, the brown, brownish type. And also some, some spider wood on top of that. Um, but it's been mostly covered by Visidens Fontanas, also known as, as Phoenix Moss. In, between, in the middle there we have some um, Rotala Atra. Then there's some uh, Monte Carlo on the front here. There's a few types of Anubias, a few types of Bushophilandra. And the most recent addition is the, the hair grass, the Eleogaris acicularis. That's a little bit, a little bit taller hair grass. I think that looks really nice here. Really like that, that new addition. And we again have a large group of red cherry shrimp in here. And then there's a few sort of leftover fish from, from previous aquascapes. So we have three amber tetras. And there's one um, orange, blue eye, neon, I don't know the name, the Australian rainbows. I'll uh, link the scientific name in the bottom. So I was running for a year and a half already. I don't think I've ever kept an aquascape that long. And I don't think I'm gonna take it down anytime soon either. Because the way it looks right now, I don't think I can come up with anything better looking in, in this small aquarium, you know? So I think this is a great example that you can have it's still a very nice looking aquascape for a relatively sm small budget because it's DIY CO2, the small internal filter doesn't cost anything. The only thing that's a little bit expensive here is the light. I think it's 80 or 90 euros or something. Everything else just... I think this total setup, total setup would not cost more than 200 euros. Alright, let's move on to the smallest uh, aquascape of this shelf. So this one here is the smallest of the three. It measures 20 by 20 by 25. So it holds about 10 liters or two, two and a half gallons. And this one was set up in May. Yeah, I think it was May. So it's about seven months old now. So with this cape, I applied my favorite uh, moss dry start method. Um, so I put a lot of mini Christmas moss into the blender with some yogurt, applied that to the entire hardscape, and then did a, did a dry start for three weeks or so. So the whole hardscape is, is now covered with a mini Christmas moss. Actually just recently I pulled out a lot of it because it was just getting too overgrown. So this is again just a super simple setup. Now in the beginning I did add a CO2 to this, but I think two or three months ago I've removed the CO2 system because it just I wasn't I wasn't feeling it anymore and didn't want to bother with it anymore. And it's doing like absolutely fine without CO2. So the only real technique here is a small uh, hang on the back filter that you don't see anymore because it's completely covered with the hydrocotyl tri tripartita. And then we have a small 5 watt LED light. This is the um, power LED from Denela. I bought this light, I think five years ago now. Still, still doing just fine. So I really like this cape, especially because of all the small Busa Flandre that you see in here. I'm a big fan of, of Busa Flandre and these small ones, they're so cute and they're so beautiful. And another thing I really like is the, the, the tree party tank growing outside of the water, completely covering up the uh, the hang on the back filter and this is growing everywhere like it's even can you see that it's, it's plants like it's like growing down the entire shelf so again just a really simple simple setup and there's no soil in here either it's just some some sand and some gravel and that's because we mostly have epiphyte plants there's some anubias there's a lot of bush of landra we have the the moss and then we have a little bit of the uh, trident java fern in the back. Uh, there's a few shrimps in here, a few snails, 
and there's actually there's one fish there's the um, the bandit bandit killy clown killy i'll leave the scientific name in the bottom i don't know exactly yeah just a really lovely simple setup doesn't really require a lot of maintenance just a simple 50 percent water change once a week just a little scrubbing of the glass and and that's it okay so those were the three aquascapes on this shelf uh, there's two more things i want to show you first one being the wabikusa uh, wabikusa is basically just a, a ball of substrate so it's just a ball of aqua soda that i compressed together wrapped it with the um, moss uh, i think it was christmas moss that i've used and then i've just attached a load of different um, plants and just let them grow immersed or above water so i made this one in halfway through october so i would say it's about two and a half months old now and I, I really love it this thing is so so easy to take care of and it's it's really beautiful So if you never made a wabikusa before, then I really recommend that you uh, you try it out. So we just have a very small glass yeah, aquarium or, or container, glass container made of OptiWide glass. Uh, this one's from uh, Viv, Viv Aquatics. And then we have a the Jihiros uh, C2 RGB. This is a really, it's a really beautiful light. A little bit more powerful than the regular C2 and also fully controllable with their uh, smartphone app. So this Wabikusa only required a little bit of maintenance uh, during the first few weeks. So I think the first three weeks I've covered it with plastic just to let the uh, plants adapt to being above water. And I sprayed it almost two, three, four times a, four times a day just to keep it, keep it moist and stop the plants from drying out. Um, but after those three, four weeks, I took the plastic off and I think since then, so it's been two months, maybe I've sprayed it three or four times maximum. So yeah, the plants have adapted really well to being above water. I mean, this the light here is a really bright light and plants are not drying out. I don't have to spray them anymore. So like I said, it's really easy to take care of. So the only maintenance is every two or three weeks, I take the wabikusa out, I trim it a little bit, then I clean the container, put some fresh water in it, and that's it. Another thing that's really nice about this Wabikusa is that since two weeks now, the Hygrophila Araguaya has started producing a lot of small flowers. We have all these small purple flowers, which just, yeah, it just looks beautiful. Okay, the last item on the shelf is the Biosphere. This is very similar to the Wabikusa, um, except this is a, a closed vase with a bit of built-in light. Now normally people would plant this with uh, terrestrial plants, terrarium plants, all those kind of things. Um, but I've planted it with aquatic plants. Very similar to the Wabikusa. And I've actually just treated like an aquarium, like an aquascape. Uh, I just didn't fill it up with water. So there's a layer of, uh, of aqua soil. Then there's your common uh, aquarium plants. We have uh, Monte Carlo, we have some Christmas moss. Um, Hydrocotyl vegetalata, that's the mushroom type plant. Uh, some tall hair grass. And oh, there's a little bit of Altenanthera by Nikki Mini in there as well. So, this is just another low maintenance plant feature. And the only thing I do here is just switch on the light. I give it a spray maybe once or twice a week. And just let it run its course. It's, I don't really do anything to it. Sometimes I, I trim the. Uh, the mushroom plant if it gets too too big and creates too much shadow but overall this is very yeah very low maintenance Okay, 
so this one you've guys seen probably just last week so we're not going to spend too much time on it uh, but this is the 70 liter scapers tank uh, measures 50 centimeters left to right 39 centimeters front to back and it's 36 centimeters high so 70 liters or 18 us gallons so this was set up now two and a half weeks ago so it's still very fresh um, plant wise we have the um, dwarf hagras in the front mixed in with the helantium tendulum red um, the whole hardscape is covered with visitants fontanas uh, on the rocks we have also Hygrophila pina tifida and uh, two different types of bush of uh, In the background the red plant is the Ludwigia species red and we also have cryptogreen crispatula that one still needs to grow before you can actually see it. Uh, the rest of the technique I'm using a CO2 system from, from Dandelion here and uh, this is a system with those 500 grams disposable bottles works really well actually. I've been using this system since July and the bottle is still not finished, so it's yeah more than half a year now. Uh, the filter is the JBL E902, very powerful filter, does 900 liters per hour. It's more than enough for this 70 liter tank. Uh, attached, we have some lily pipes from Vapor Aquatics, as well as the um, inlet with the skimming portion. And the light unit is the 45 centimeter Chihiros WRGB version 2. So this is the only scape that actually has quite a lot of fish. Uh, we have a group of 20 of the blue eye neon rainbows from Australia. Pseudomucil Gertruda. Leave the name on the bottom. And we have a group of 9 uh, Galaxy Vrasboras. Also leave the scientific name on the bottom. And besides that we have 6 Autosynclus catfish. Okay, let's move over to the last tank. That's the Dutch style aquarium. And this one you guys have also seen recently. Uh, if you by any chance haven't, I'll leave the link in the description box below. So this one is also about two and a half weeks old now. Uh, doing really good. We have a little bit of melt on some plants, but nothing to worry about really. So let's just go over the technique really quick. Uh, the aquarium itself is from Beta Aquarius. Measures 40 centimeters from left to right. It's 30 centimeters deep and it's 30 centimeters high. So it holds about 36 liters. Uh, the technique here is actually quite advanced. I'm using a very high powered LED light that is connected to a special controller that controls my pH, controls the uh, CO2 system, it controls the light, it controls the temperature and the uh, fertilizer dosing. I made a whole video about the technique as well. Again, link in the description. So yeah, my first ever Dutch style aquascape. Super excited to see this one develop and, and see the plant grow. It's been two and a half weeks, but there's definitely really a very significant growth in the plants. And all these plants are from Denle and I've been using Denle plants for a while now. And I must say that they have been some of the highest quality plants that I've used in, the, in a very long time. So we don't have any fish in this aquascape yet. So guys, let me know in the comments what type of fish should look well in a Dutch style aquascape. Because I have no idea actually. I'm thinking of moving the, the Galaxy Rush Boars into here. But if you guys have any great fish suggestions, drop them in the comments.
Okay, so that's the tour complete. Guys, let me know in the comments uh, which one of these aquascapes was your favorite. And if you have any other questions about them, let me know as well. Um, enjoy the rest of your Christmas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.